Yes, good morning, my brother, and thanks for having it's, me. Uh, you're welcome. It's good to um, have you again on the program this morning. Thank you. It's always my pleasure to join you. All right. Um, I, I hope your, of course, um, is a great day for you. It's, uh, it's a Monday, and um, Mondays are usually days where, you know, we get the grounds running for the week. That is exactly so for me, and um, um, I hope that is also the same for uh, your listeners. Uh, yes, certainly. I am hoping as that that will be the um, same thing that they will be saying. But then let's talk about getting the ground running. On Saturday, marked 100 days in office for uh, Governor Charles Chukwuma Saludo, the Governor of Anambra State, and uh, he addressed the nation in a, uh, about 30 minutes long, um, you know, speech that he delivered. And uh, the contents of the speech had lots, uh, some of his achievements and some of the plans so far. But let's get uh, to this conversation this morning. First off, uh, do you think that, uh, of course, the governor said he's not a fan of um, giving 100 days in office um, speeches and, you know, talking, talking to people. He prefers doing an annual, um, you know, address to the nation and to carrying the nation the state along with the things that he has done. But how do you think, if, if you're asked to rate the performance of the state governor in the past 100 days, how would you rate it? I would think, um, first of all, I'm going to speak as one, a citizen of Anambra State and a taxpaying citizen of Anambra State who is also a member of the attentive public. Then also, mm. I am also a partisan politician. I am a PDP scribe and I campaign mm. vigorously for the candidate of my party, Valentine Chineto Zubu. And then thirdly, I'm going to speak as a good governance advocate who advocates good governance. So let me talk about mm. as a citizen of Anambra State. Mm. Nobody who lives in Anambra State as a citizen in good standing will not recognize the enormity of the task ahead mm. and the commitment with which Soludo has brought to the office of the governor of Anambra government house. Uh, mm. Soludo has been dedicated. Soludo has shown capacity, manifest capacity, and Soludo has yeah. shown, the, shown the seriousness and uh, the zeal that is required of the office he's occupying. So the challenge is, like he mentioned, a legion. We know this already. We know about the positive of funds, but at the state level, at the federal level, and, and internationally, uh, uh, we know how it is that the world is facing serious, serious economic crisis. Uh, of the fallout of COVID-19 and then the war with Russia and Ukraine, we are seeing mm. supply chain disruption. So this is not just peculiar to Anambra or peculiar to Nigeria. It's a global crisis. So Anambra is also, uh, I will not say a beneficiary, but um, a victim of a global scale economic meltdown, so to speak. So Anambra, uh, uh, Georgian Saludo, of the strength of one, the mismanaged uh, economy from 2013 mm. to 2017, and then from 2017 to 2021. And then mm. looking at what is happening globally, one can make excuses to say, look, the challenges are legion. This man is putting his best. That is what I can say to you as a citizen. A citizen. Let me talk to you as a partisan politician. Mm. Uh, because when we, for instance, looked at Anambra State in 2017, and we said, look, we've seen this Zubia now, we've seen him in four years. Uh, this guy cannot do much. This guy, we have seen some deficiencies uh, that suggest to us that leaving him at the helm of affairs in Anambra State for another eight years will be problematic. We okay. campaigned, we intended to replace uh, Obi um, with Oselo Kobaze, who was then the candidate of my party, the PDP. We yeah. showed Anambra empirical evidence as to be announced misgovernance. We told them, look, there are monies that we are kept, the monies are no longer there. We told them, yeah. look, this man has departed from the governance norms of Anambra State. Because if you look at Ngige, and then you look yeah. at Pitobi, and then you look at Obiano, you will see a clear departure from the way governance has been, or what we believe to be the now new governance structure in Anambra State. So we said this man is an aberration to the governance structure that is already being established in Anambra State. So we made arguments 
solid mm. arguments. We pulled data from the debt management office. We pulled data from the consolidated um, revenue account of the government. We pulled data from the audited reports, four audited reports of Anambra State Government. We pulled data from the publicly available data from uh, mm. the budget of Anambra State and even the budget performance to say, look, this man is not doing his best. And these documents mm. were available to Saludo. Mm. But Saludo chose to be on the side of his personal ambition. With Saludo's speech uh, talking about his gentleman's agreement with Obi Anon in 2017, we now mm. knew why he chose to endorse Obi Anon, knowing fully well that Obi Anon did not perform well. And knowing fully well that committing another four years to this man's hands could spell doom. Mm. Today, Saludo goes around telling people that the crisis, the insecurity in Anambra State, has been planted mm. firmly for three years. Mm. Which means, who was the governor in those three years where this insecurity was being planted? And who chose to look away? The same governor he supported in 2017. Did this governor cho show signs that he wouldn't have been able to do the work? Yes. Mm. But Saludo chose his personal ambition over that of Anambra State. So it is manifesting in insecurity. It is manifesting in economic waste and uh, uh, low fiscal capacity of the state. It is mm. manifesting in what is happening in Opoko and indeed in only Chinese virus. And in fact, all parts of Anambra State, we are waste management has become a problem. So I want to believe uh, mm. that Soludo is a core enabler of the problem he's unfortunately trying to solve today. We pray for him that he succeeds. And that brings me mm. to the third point, which is as a good mm. governance advocate, which talks mm. about knowing these things I know about Saludo politically, knowing also mm. what I know about him as a good citizen in, uh, of Anambra State, mm. and as a good governance advocate, our support is for him. Our prayers are with mm. him because we cannot afford not to succeed. That's why we are supporting him, we are praying for him, and we are offering him all necessary support that is needed for him to succeed in the first four years he has gotten from the Anambra. If he gets mm. another four years, no problems, but we will support him to the shield, uh, and that's mm. what we are doing today. All right. Well, um, I like the fact that you said if he gets it right, right, you're going to you will be supporting him as governor of Anambra. But again, um, you know, you, you touched a, a few things, which the uh, state governor also touched while he was addressing the state on Saturday. You touched the issues of waste management. Uh, you, you, talked the, you touched the issue of debt. And you also touched the issue of insecurity, among other things. But uh, you also mentioned the gentleman agreement of 2017, which the uh, state governor mentioned during his inauguration. But we, we actually um, do not know exactly what the uh, gentleman agreement was. Or maybe uh, at the time when um, they were having this agreement, maybe, uh, who knows, uh, they must have said, okay, well, I think you can still, you know, do something to change the situation. Uh, so um, I, I, I think that um, uh, standing on the ground of knowing that this uh, previous administration wasn't going to be able to run the state uh, for the next four years uh, due to a gentleman agreement, putting his personal ambition before the state might not uh, be exactly true. Sure. Well, these things are matters of speculation, and then when you speculate, you d draw data from publicly available information. One of the mm -hmm. things we know about Tobiano's government is that it showed signs of weakness in its first years in office, first few years in office. Again, mm -hmm. anybody that knows anything about governance in Anambra, they will know that Anambra deviated badly from already established norms. Ngigi did not borrow much. Mm -hmm. did not borrow much. Or if, if you ever borrowed at all, except from the borrowings that you had done on behalf of the state by the federal government, right? Mm. Uh, those mm. we, are, we are borrowings that we are done on behalf of because the federal government will borrow money on behalf of the states and share it amongst the states. So I don't think mm. P2B personally borrowed money on behalf of the state, mm. apart from the one I told you. So, but when Obiano came, it was obvious that Obiano was drawing, borrowing. There were lots of, these were publicly available data. But the man mm. looked at it and said, it is not broken, why fix it? He then looked at Obiano and said that Obiano is a general, that is not now right to change a general in the middle of a war. Then mm. he turned around another four years to say, oh, I met an empty tre treasury. So when did you notice that the treasury was empty? Now, okay, when you now say that Obiano has stopped paying gratuity, which is what he mentioned uh, two days ago, since yes, 2018, he said mm. there has not been payment of gratuity since 2018. 
So the, his assessment of Obiano has changed in just four years. What happened? So did he know this about Obiano just these few first hundred days, or did he know this about him before now and chose instead to stick to the gentleman's agreement, which he has openly admitted that there was? So mm. I am not going to further speculate on that. Uh, mm. uh, those things are now what's in the Igbo. We call Angu Talo Nabani. Everything exactly. that, uh, yes. So those things are now behind us. What we are looking mm. for is how to solve this insecurity. And unfortunately, mm. people have lost their lives to insecurity. People have mm. lost their livelihoods to insecurity. Businesses are closing by the day. Potential investors are leaving Anambra State. And people who have ordinarily come here to buy goods from Anambra are no longer doing so because of insecurity. So things mm. are happening. Things are bad. But all we are looking for now is solution. And it appears that some of the steps he's taking thus far are right. And that will continue to encourage him to take right steps. Exactly, Especially when you refer to his homegrown approach to solving insecurity, revitalizing mm. the Anambra State Vigilante Services, which mm. has now been revitalized, which is mm. now assisting the federal authorities. Well, we're to we're going to insecurity. come to that. Um, Chima, we're going to come to that. But let's talk about the debt, the, the, the debt uh, issue that we, you also raised, which um, the state governor raised while addressing the uh, state on Saturday. Now, the state governor actually said for sure that um, the very first 100 days, of course, so far, so bumpy, but so good. All right? He has admitted that it has not been an easy ride for him for the first 100 days. Now, one of the issues um, which he's currently facing is the over 20 uh, billion naira debt that, um, of course, is being owed you know, in, in the state, which, of course, he has said that they are working on, uh, you know, clearing that particular debt. So now that we are looking at this amount of money, now let's talk about debt management. Okay, let's talk about debt management. Uh, how well do you think that um, the state governor in the uh, past 100 days have been able to manage uh, the finances and, of course, to clear all of this backlog that he inherited? No, anybody that is expecting the governor to clear backlog of debt in, in 100 days is not being realistic. Even as a member of the opposition, I cannot in good conscience, even if my candidate had won that election, nobody would have expected him to clear backlog of debt in 100 days. It's not feasible. And then when you look at what this man is struggling with, one is that he's struggling with consolidated revenue or federal allocations, which he mentioned that there has not mm. been much because... NNPC has not been able to do any remittance to the Federation account uh, for mm. watch uh, 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 disbursement to the states. Mm. So that's number one. But number two is that during his campaign, especially within Onicha, Obaru, Obosi, Idemili South and Idemili area, he publicly mm. committed to, and I support him, to stamping out the menace of touting in a number mm. of states. And mm. if you remember, Obiano has always told us that he's doing well with IGR. And this IGR has human consequences. That anywhere you go, you want to To buy pure water, you are taxed. To buy things, you know, you see all manner of touts working on behalf of the state government. Because I'll tell you, these people are working on behalf of the state government. How do I know? Because their benefactors have what is called um, tax agreements, a memorandum of understanding with the state government. So if mm. the people who employ these touts have direct imprimatur from the state government, which means that the boys on the ground are working for the state government. So mm. the state government unleashed these touts to generate revenue. But the people who are paying these touts are saying, this is not the right way to go about this. We don't want this to continue. And this governor committed publicly to doing that. Today, mm. there are evidences that suggest that the governor is working hard to stamp out touts in Orange. So okay. if you have closed the federal allocation, now look at the, the, this thing holistically. Money is not coming from the federal government. The money that you're also getting from the locals, which is in the form of taxation, you've also okay. closed it a bit so that you can restructure it and find a better way to collect taxes. So okay. you're not getting from the federal source, you're not getting from the local source because you want to clean okay. it up. Now, how do okay. you deal with backlog of debts? So mm. I don't expect him to clear backlog of debts in, in 100 days. What I expect is that he has openly acknowledged that these debts exist. 
Mm. Yeah, those of course, so, they are already working and um, starting the process of actually clearing them slowly. Yes, he has also committed publicly to making mm. sure that no further debts accumulate, which means that all new retirees, upon mm. retirement, you are paid your gratuity and you are paid your pen, your your, your emoluments. Then mm. for. Previous people who have retired between 2017, 2018, up to this point, who are old, the government is saying that they will work out modalities to become begin phased, because you can't pay this debt in one day. No, begin phased uh, 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 liquidation or phased uh, uh, um, amortization, so to speak, of those debts. So I agree with him uh, 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 that those debts will be paid in phases. Uh, and so, yes, the governor has and enjoys my support in trying to deal with the debt issue that is uh, facing Anambra State. And not just oh, debt about um, um, gratuities. There are a lot of contractors who are claiming debt too, of mm. works done. Mm. Because if you're a government contractor and the government awards a road, say, on its Enugu uh, Express road, a portion of it for you to manage or irritate or do anything, I'm just using that federal road as an instance. And mm. you've done the work, and there is evidence that you've done the work, and you submitted your, and then all government agencies responsible have confirmed that you've done the work done, to, uh, assigned mm. to you, and the government mm. is owing you. Then that is also debt too. And then mm. if there are people who supplied uh, equipment to the state government hospitals, if there are people who supplied uh, medical uh, uh, supplies to state government hospitals, if there are people who supplied textbooks, for instance, to state government schools, those mm. are public procurement debts. So I'm aware mm. that there are public procurement debts that exist in Anambra State. So when the governor is talking about debts, it's not just gratuity. There is public mm. procurement debts that need to be resolved. And I want to believe that he's aware of all these things and he has a plan in place to start uh, dealing with these debts as money begins to trickle in in the coming weeks and months. All right. Uh, as money begins to trickle in in the coming weeks and months, now let's talk about waste management, which the um, state governor actually touched, and which you two have actually also touched a little at the beginning of this program. Now, um, the state governor is saying that, that well, the, the government is doing its best to make sure that um, our Anambra state is clean as much as possible. But we also notice that, well, even after some of the instructions, like um, the issue of the Abwere, which uh, always under, which he also mentioned, that I've been taken out of the road. A few days ago, I was somewhere, I, I was around Iweka. You know, I visited someone around Iweka. And then, of course, we were discussing, and he said that he was just, not even just him, but he, his, some of his colleagues too were attacked. He's a driver, and then they were attacked by all these uh, aboro that actually collect money. But let's talk waste, and of course, let's um, you know sandwich both the waste and the aboro issue now. Waste is still being dumped indiscriminately in the state, and sometimes you find out that you will see heaps of waste that is growing in certain areas in Anambra State. Yes, the state governor is saying that he has been doing um, the much or he has been doing a lot when it comes to waste management in the state. How do you rate that um, uh, part of his um, speech? Well, I think you mentioned the Aboro issue to to mm. to express the fact or the point that despite the fact that the government says that it is doing something, that the problem mm. has not completely, completely been eradicated. And I, I agree with that, that there mm. are still Aboros in the streets. And again, if you are the governor, what you'll be struggling with now is you have Aboros, you have unknown government. Where do you deploy your security resources? So mm. that is a debate for another day. Now, because of uh, the refuse issue and the interest some of my writings uh, uh, generated, I was mm. thankfully uh, contracted by a uh, human rights concern, a uh, civil rights concern in partnership with Christian Aid to do a documentary on human on waste management in Anambra State. And it mm. opened my eyes to a lot of the issues because I interfaced with a lot of the stakeholders, both the people who generate the waste, people who collect the waste, Aswama, professionals in the academia who have done something on solid waste. I interfaced with a lot of people and I saw that even if Anambra State devotes one year budget mm. to waste management, it is largely inefficient. That really? I can tell you for free. Wow. Yeah, that I can. So, because the enormity of the problem, both in terms of waste management infrastructure, which is capital mm. intensive, but mm. in terms of attitude of the end users, which is difficult to manage. 
are you going mm. to set up a, a court to start mandating people on how to dump their waste? Now, if you are going to stay, keep your waste in your house, we are coming to do house-to-house collection of waste. There are some streets that are not motorable. The waste management trucks cannot enter there. So mm. a lot of things you have to factor in, including town planning is part of waste management. Mm. And population. In fact, as of today, there is no data. Anambra State does not know the amount of data it's waste it's, it's generating a month. And that waste management data, there are monies that are available to the state. There are monies trapped in World Bank, in the European Union, and in some of the federal agencies that can be targeted at waste management. But the first priority is that they will demand from you solid data on how much data you generate. On how much waste you generate. Waste, you, right? Yes, waste, sorry. Mm. Anambra State does not know how much waste it generates. Until that data is available, there are some resources that will not be unlocked. And then when you unlock those resources, how do you prioritize them? Because if you have 10 million naira, for instance, in a month to clear waste, where you need a billion naira in a month, then what do you do? If you are sending tractors to go to a community twice in a month, how are you sure that you're able to send to all the waste collection points in the state? How many waste evacuator, evacuators do we have? How many compactors do we have? If we buy a thousand more, will it be enough? If we recruit mm. 1,000 more youths or even 5,000 more youths into that waste management, will it be enough? So there are problems. What Soludo has seen in the first 100 days mm. is that because at the time, the deputy governor was practically himself evacuating these refuse. At least people can attest to that. Yet it is not efficient. That even if Soludo says, I am not going to govern the state again, I'm going to focus my life on this waste management, the problems are too legion to be solved in four years. But the governor can set a template. The government mm. can try. But again, the public expectation should not be much. And the public should be willing to, exactly. to play their own part. Because you see people fling out refuse anywhere they like, and if you point mm. at them, they will point ten fingers at the government without trying mm. to take even one modicum of responsibility. Even if there are no waste disposal efforts at those beans, like people say in Calabar, mm. there are waste beans mm. on every street. I have my own bag. Like anything I eat, my family will know what I eat when I come back because in my knapsack, I drink such water, I put it there. I eat up, I, mm. I put it there. When I come back in the evening, I empty mm. it into my waste this thing. So if all citizens of the state can begin to take individual responsibilities, mm. even if there are no waste evacuation points around the state, when you mm. dr- drink such water or bottle water or whatever it is, don't fling it in this. But this attitude management mm. is a going to be a different conversation on its own. So, yes, I agree that the government is doing something. And I also agree with the public that what the government mm. is doing is largely, largely not enough. Hey, all right, it's largely not enough. And good thing you have said that even if they give the government a, a one whole year, it wouldn't be enough to actually do the job that is needed. Because even as of yesterday, I was um, somewhere, um, there, of course, it rained. And I was just standing somewhere waiting for the rain to subside. And what I saw on the road was not any, anything to write home about. Because you could see waste everywhere on the road. The, the, the drainage were blocked and so nothing could move but then again you mentioned the issue of um, roads getting to the uh, waste uh, depots more like the houses to pick up waste if you want to use that even though the governor touched the road issue but let's go to insecurity because we don't have it all of the time this yes. morning let's go to insecurity now the governor has also mentioned and touched the issue of insecurity he also mentioned the peace committee the um of course the restoration committee which was set up but um up till now, up till now, you can, you can actually let us in on this. Uh, of course, you're also in Oka. Has this peace committee, the peace and reconciliation committee, been able to do anything at all as it pertains to um, the uh, non government issue and the repentance of some of these um, uh, terrorists? Well, um, the governor in his speech claimed that this group has been inaugurated because, Mm. uh, let me quote him, he said, establishment and inauguration of truth, justice and peace committee. Mm. Um, If that inauguration happened, perhaps I didn't get a wind of it. Because I'm aware that when they started, they said Chido Anselmo Dinkalu, Chido Dinkalu will be heading the committee, and there were a lot of big names that were supposed to be on the committee. So if such a big event, such big event of such magnitude happened in Oka, 
mm. and the media did not report it, uh, except if they are going to do clandestine work, because you mm. know some of the work uh, of security is also done behind uh, closed doors. You know, exactly. But if mm. you are going to inaugurate a committee, one of the things uh, Nigeria is popular with is inaugurating committees. Mm. But one of the things I will also tell you is that while you are inaugurating committees, there have been previous committees that have been inaugurated in times past. For instance, mm. uh, at the wake of the NSAS uh, protest, several state governments, mm. including Anambra state government, inaugurated NSAS panel. That panel mm. sat, and I think Anambra received the highest number of petitions in the country. About 410 mm. petitions, or is it 310? I forgot the numbers now. Mm. Exact number. And this panel was headed by a retired justice. And mm. I attended some of those panel hearings. And some of the issues that were raised, one, the issue of police brutality. A lot of victims brought verifiable evidence that they mm. or theirs have been victimized. Mm. Number two, we saw that a lot of the numbers on that NSAS panel report was as a result of the crackdown on mass sub agitation. If you remember, mm. there was a time there was this mass sub agitation in Anambra and some parts of the southeast, and mm. it became almost a menace. Although it didn't get up to the point we are witnessing now, but it became mm. a problem, and the government violently quelled those agitations. And in mm. the process of trying to do that, there were a lot of people that we are rough handled, that we are not treated well, that we are treated, executed extrajudicially, and then there were a lot of people who the government can just come into your house, pick up your word, no nothing, no mm. trial no execution is he dead or alive we don't know where is the cops we don't know so those mm. are the issues and these issues were dealt with extensively by an state and San panel i'm aware of that, I'm aware of that. <laughs> and they have mm. issued their reports but mm. the government of Anambra State, Obianos government did not act on that report before he left office but you know no. government is a continuum Mm. I expected um, Governor Soludo to go and look into the archives, and this is not so so past. This is just uh, a few months ago. It's not as if it has collected mm. dust. To look into mm. the archives and say, instead of inaugurating if another panel to look mm. at these same issues, there has been a panel mm. that did a work. Let us issue a white paper on that report. Let us see what we can do with that report, and if we find it insufficient. We can now, in addition to the, some of the things we've done, inaugurate, but inaugurating another panel without dealing with the panel that has been inaugurated, mm. uh, you know, it, it could be end up as a government of panels, and I hope it doesn't end up that way. All right. Uh, just quickly, because we have just about five minutes to um, have this conversation. The, 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 the conversation is a very lengthy one, if you agree with me, yes. because there are too many things to be picked out of this conversation. But then um, some persons or some citizens believe that the state governor is treating the issue of insecurity with kid gloves. In one word, do you think that the government is doing enough currently as it pertains to insecurity? Just one word. I think the government is doing enough. I am more than impressed with what the government is doing, and I'll give you my summary in one minute. First, mm. before Osoludo entered government, mm. there was popular support for that insecurity. A lot of people were hailing these people. People mm. thought they were being good and kind and being the Messiah. Today, mm. there is almost a near consensus. There are still locals still supporting them, but there is almost a near consensus. There has been that line that Osoludo has drawn between good and evil. Mm. People now know that these people are not freedom fighters, that they are a criminal enterprise. And mm. once you take out that their ideological knockout punch, you are beginning to defeat them ideologically. And it can only happen that if you defeat them ideologically, the next logical step is to defeat them on the ground. And that is going to happen. So I agree that Soludo is doing all he can. Because if you look mm. at it, people are expecting him to bring in the military. Imo state government mm. tried it. Has it solved the problem to you today? Because when the, the Supreme Court governor of Imo State, in quotes, mm. assumed office, he unleashed the military on, on unknown government. Did it solve the problems mm. here today? It did not. So you have to balance between terror and between trying to strike a, a sensible balance. So, and I think that Soluto is doing what he should do in terms of addressing mm. security. All right. I don't know how you want to do this in one minute, but um, I want to collab these three things. Now, the governor talked about job creation. And I also know that when you mentioned job creation, a lot of um, Indian number, Ganeche, the issue of um, the teacher recruitment exercise. Then the governor also said that um, the Ganambra state have been able to achieve the open dedication free status for Agwata local government. And of course, it is um, the second after Anambra East. And as well, the, the government has been able to rehabilitate the water 
other facilities at the Jerome Odoji Secretariat for civil servants, which, of course, the Secretariat has not had water running in the office for over eight years. Now, the one is the issue of open dedication, which, of course, um, Anambra have been able to achieve the open dedication free status, the issue of job creation, and the issue of water in, um, that have not been flowing for about eight years now. Uh, not an number achieving open dedication free status. It is just two local governments uh, uh, because on each other. You don't even need to rely on any data. Just go around mm-hmm. Onitsha. You will know that Anambra has not achieved open dedication, uh, free dedication testing in Onitsha. But again, mm-hmm. it is good to highlight some of the processes, progresses have been made. Uh, water mm-hmm. and and water is essential to dedication and open and wash system, the water mm-hmm. and all of those things. But again, the government is doing what it can. Uh, some of us believe that it can do more. But given the resources available to the government, it will be unconscionable, mm-hmm. even as a partisan politician to expect that anybody uh, and in my thinking I don't think that anybody would have handled this better now the way the government is because if it is my own party that is in office I cannot yeah. give you guarantees that would have done much more than what this man is currently doing so wow. let's give him some time and then yeah. if he doesn't deliver there will be some yeah. of us who will be in the opposition to remind him of his failures, to remind, like we reminded Obiano, like we provided hard back evidence to show mm. the people that Obiano is doing well. For now, it seems that the governor is doing the best he could, and the best mm. he can get from us is uh, support and prayers and partnership in any way we can. All right. I thank you very much, um, Chima Christian, for speaking with us this morning. And I like the fact that you have spoken as a gentleman. And um, not a gentleman agreement this time, but as a true citizen <laughs> of Anambra State. And um, you, were, you were just, um, you were not talking as a politician, but you were talking as Onye Anambra. And of course, you were talking as Onye um, Umwelu Anambra at heart. Thank you very much once again for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so very much.